What is R squared? This is uh, going to be a short video just to talk about what's behind R squared and how we can interpret it. Where does it come from? And so to begin with, we have some data on salaries in US dollar of cashiers. And we have some information on their uh, educational attainment. So this is actually a variable that uh, reflects the years of education that they have gone through. And we have about 300 observations, and it's just showing us a couple of years. Now, what we could do is run a linear regression and try to see if there's a relationship between the years of education and somebody's actual salary. And of course, whether that's positive, negative, strong, weak, etc. And so we can simply run this regression and we get the regression output. Now, we're told a couple of things, but for now I am specifically going to focus on R squared. 76.9%. R squared is a ratio between 0 and 1. It's often talked about as a percentage, so between 0 and 100%. In this case, it's roughly 77%. What does that mean? Where does this number come from? So the definition of R-square stands for the percentage of variance explained in by our model, in this case by our x-variable education, and it's the percentage of variance that we explain in our dependent variables. So what we're trying to explain or predict, which in this case is salary of these cashiers. And it tells us with an additional year of education, as education was expressed in years, somebody is making approximately $70 more. Now, 77% percent of variance explained. What does that mean? Where does that come from? Let's look at an actual plot of our data. And so I'm just going to bring up a scatter plot and we're going to have salary on the y-axis and education on the x-axis. And what we can do is we will add a line, and this actually gives us our regression line that we have just looked at on the screen. If we write out the regression equation by taking the intercept plus the slope for education, so 71.2 times however many years of education, we actually get this line. So depending on the years of education, we have an intercept some here, somewhere here at 300 something, which is for when education is at a zero, so we don't actually see this here. And we have a slope of the line of approximately 72, and this is our regression line. Now, for our regression, all of our individual predictions are exactly on this line. For whatever years of education, so 10 years of education, our predicted salary is exactly around 1100 and something. Now, of course, as we can see, not all actual salaries fall exactly at 1100 and something. There are some errors that we make when we go by our line. All of these points that are actually not on the line represent errors. And the question is, going back to before we had this line, what would be our initially best estimate of salary to begin with? And probably our best estimate of salary to begin with would simply be the average. And what we're going to do is, let's just save this to the report. So we get this plot. And what I want to do is I want to add a line for the average so we can look at this visually. And it turns out, uh, if we go back here, the help function to the rescue, so we click on the little help icon, 
You go down here and it tells us you want to add a horizontal line. That's exactly what I'd like to do. Then for our codes that we just got, and this is just for a visualization, we don't have to do this in class, but it's just gonna help me do it just now. We're gonna add a custom as true at the end and then add that horizontal line. So back to the report. So we just need to change this to custom is true and just add that horizontal line. Now I want this to be at the average salary. So we actually have to go back and check what, what is the average salary. And we can do this going back to explore. And let me just click on salary and get to the average salary. Here we go. It's about $1,300. So I'm going back and I'm adding this here. Okay, let me graph this. All right, so we have our regression line. After running the regression, we have these different errors that we've talked about from our regression line. So we can calculate the distance here between these individual points and our regression line. And before we had information on education, how education could affect or explain salaries, if we just had to come up with a prediction for what would be our best guess for somebody's salary, we would go by the average. And the average is basically represented by this line, which is about $1,300. Now, if we don't have any model, which is our regression line, what would be our errors? Our errors would be all of the differences between this average line of salary and the individual observations. And as you can immediately see, uh, these differences are a lot bigger in total. There are certain individual points where the average is closer to the individual observation than our line, but on uh, average, basically our line is a lot closer to all of these individual observations. But we could calculate the difference between this average line and each of these individual observations. And we would get a different error, which is our initial error if we don't actually have any model. Now, let's just do this. And it turns out uh, we have some predefined options that allow us to, to save these distances from our model. And then we can simply calculate the one from the average. In order to get the differences, um, which are also called residuals, between these individual observations, the true values of salary for somebody at different years of education, and our predicted values, which are the values that would fall exactly on this regression line, we can go back to linear regression and store the residual. So when you click on store, it's going to save a variable which, which contains all of the individual residuals. So let's look at that. Let's actually also save the predicted value so that we can compare uh, the actual with predicted and get these residuals. So I'm just going to predict for our data, our entire data set, for all of the different years of education and I'm going to save those predicted values here as store. So it's going to be called predict reg. If we go back to our data, we should now have salary, education, the predicted values, and the residuals. And if we look at it, actually here in view, salary, education, residuals, and predicted, we can see that, for instance, for the first observation, that the actual true salary was 722. Our predicted salary was 816. And so the difference between these two was our error, which was the 94. And then we have this for each of our 300 observations. We have the actual values, we have the prediction, and we have the residuals. Now, what we need to do is, in order to get an idea if we go back here, of the error that we 
still have, based on our regression line, our model, we could just sum up all of these different distances here that we just calculated or just saved. The only problem is that if we sum up all of these different distances, the negative and the positive distances are all going to equal each other out. So to solve that problem, we're just going to square these distances so that it's going to give us a positive number. And so we will go back and calculate a new variable, which is simply going to be the squared residuals. So we're going to create a new variable and we can also do this in Excel but I'm just going to do everything here in Radiant. So predict uh, sorry residuals reg squared equals residuals reg squared. And if we press enter, it's going to give us a preview. Seems to do what we want it to do. And so I'm going to store this new variable in our salary data set. And so now, if we click on view, we also have this new variable here, which is simply the square term of these residuals so that we can sum it up and it's not going to be uh, zero because they would cancel each other out. And so we have our error for the line, which is all of the cases or uh, predictions in which we were not exactly spot on. What we need still to be able to compare uh, this error to a situation where we wouldn't have any model, where we wouldn't know anything about salary, uh, and the best we could do is just take the average. So we still need to compute these errors the errors between the average line and the actual observations. And so let's just do this by creating another new variable. And we're going to call this the mean difference. And I'm actually already going to take the squared term for the same reason, uh, so that we get a positive number to work with, because they would cancel each other out. And so what is this difference? Well, uh, we still have this copy. This was our actual mean of salary. And we would like to take the difference and square that of the mean and the actual observations of salary, all of these individual cases, which they all have different salaries. And by taking this, if I spell it correctly, it worked, um, we get basically the error from simply using the average salary as, a, as our predict, prediction. And we squared this. So let's square it, and now we get the square term. And I'm going to save this again as a variable in our data set. So now we have the error for our regression model, which was the residuals squared, and we have the overall error um, without any model. So as if we just had the salary variable, what's the overall error uh, that we can compare the error of our model to? So the overall variance would be the sum of all of these, it's not variance, I'm sorry, the overall error would be the sum of all of these squared error terms. And let's just look at what that is by going to explore and simply asking for uh, the sums of these two variables. I'm going to ask for the sum here to display. And we get the sum of the errors from our model. And we also get the total sum of errors, which was from the average of salary. Now, what do we do with this? I'm just going to copy this over here to the R code window, which actually allows us to run code as we would in R. And I'm just going to copy this here for a second so I get both values. Uh, 
Okay. Now we have the total error. Let me go back to the visual visualization. So we have the total error, which are all these differences squared from the average salary. And then we have the error, which are all these differences squared from the regression line and the actual observations. What do we do with this? It turns out that if we were to take our model error and divide this by the total error, this would give us basically the amount of variance that our model does not explain. So out of the total variance, this is the error of our model that we do not explain. And turns out we can use R here as a calculator by running this code, which will give us the, which will evaluate this expression and will give us the percentage, it's 23%. Now this is what we don't explain with our model, right? Because it's the actual error of our, our model, all of the deviations from our regression line, uh, as a proportion or percentage of the total uh, error. Now, so in order to get our square, which is what we do explain, of course, we could simply say, well, let's just take one minus this amount. So instead of getting what we don't explain, we now get what we do explain, and that is indeed about 77%. Now let's see how this 77% compares to our R squared. Let's go back to the model. It is the same. Basically, what we just did is calculate R squared by hand by looking at how much of the total variance do we explain? Does education explain the total variance of salary that we can explain with our model with the help of using education and having both this uh, regression line compared to uh, not having any information or no model? Um, and basically, that's our squared. Percentage of variance explained in what we're interested in, our dependent variable, which in this case is salary in US dollars, by our, in this case, X variable, we only have one, which is education, or by our model. That's our squared for you.